Question, if a country that doesn't want black irregular migrants and now all of a sudden they want them, could there be an underlying motive or something fishy? This is the story of Spain, and I am sure by now you have had Spain preparing to give entry clearance to a whopping 300,000 Africans including Gambians together with other West African nations. But how did Spain go from paying North African countries millions of dollars to stop black Africans from reaching Spain through those countries to preparing entry clearance to about 300,000 of these same black Africans including Gambians they didn't want in their country in the first place? Reports point towards five shocking reasons that explain the whole picture. Let's take a look. Let's dive right in. Spain is a country on Europe's Iberian Peninsula that has been a hotspot for irregular migrants turning their backs on failed governance and conflict, seeking greener pastures in Europe. These black irregular migrants have been using North African countries to get to Spain and Europe. We all know that these Northern African countries don't like black Africans. So, what Spain had been busy doing for the last decade or so, was to offer these North African countries lots of money for them to stop black Africans from reaching Spain and Europe through them. In recent years, Spain has allocated significant funds to North African nations, such as Morocco, Algeria, and Tunisia, to manage migration flows and prevent irregular migrants from Sub-Saharan Africa from reaching Europe. For instance, between 2014 and 2022, the European Union with Spain as a major proponent, provided 2.1 billion euros to Morocco to enhance border security and manage migration. Spain also provided additional bilateral funds, such as 30 million euros in 2019, to Morocco for similar efforts. The collaboration often includes equipment, training for border guards, and infrastructure for border control. These measures are part of broader agreements to externalize European border management, redirecting migration pressures to transit countries like Morocco, Tunisia, and Algeria, which function as gateways for migrants aiming to cross the Mediterranean. Now Spain has just made a complete U-turn by stating that they will take in 300,000 migrants each year for a three-year period. Could you believe? This is the reason Spain wants to bring in Gambians as part of this package. But why the swift U-turn from Spain, accepting immigrants instead of paying the North African nations to stop these same Gambians and Africans from using their land to access Spain and Europe? There are five mesmerizing, unexpected reasons pushing Spain to accept these migrants as per reports. Various Spanish experts suggest that Spain is being pushed by these five reasons, which can cause the Spanish nation serious economic problems. Shockingly, all these five reasons are only for the interest of Spain and not the migrants. Yes, the migrants will benefit from it, but the sole purpose is to help Spain. Let's take a look. The first reason is the fact that Spain's ridiculously low birth rate won't sustain its economy. This is the number one reason Spain is allowing migrants into their country. Now this is a massive problem for Spain. Spain has one of the lowest birth rates in Europe. Immigration could help counterbalance this trend by boosting population growth through higher birth rates among immigrant families. Spain, along with other Mediterranean countries, has one of the lowest fertility rates in the world. To keep its population stable, Spain will need to have more babies, admit more immigrants, or see its population decline. Spain's birth rate is currently 7.816 births per 1,000 people, which is a decline from previous years. The number of babies born in Spain last year was the lowest since records started in 1941, 322,098 live births compared with the number of deaths at 434,114. The country's fertility rate is just under 1.2 children per woman, which is well below the replacement level of 2.1. Some reasons for Spain's low fertility rate include the cost of raising children, the time required for parenting, term-limited jobs for younger workers, women having more options available to them, work-family conflicts, and insufficient economic resources. So, having these migrants giving birth will obviously push the birth rate high. After all, US Africans like to give birth, even under Presidents Bola Tinubu and Adama Barrow's unfavorable economies. This is a humble request to please support our work by liking this video and subscribing to the African Pacific YouTube channel. Thank you so much. The second reason is Spain's rapidly aging population. Spain faces significant challenges due to its aging population, with one of the highest proportions of elderly people globally. Over 19% of its population is currently over 65, 
a figure projected to rise to 25% by 2050 and potentially 30.5% by 2055. This demographic trend results from increased life expectancy, currently averaging 80.7 years for men and 86.2 years for women, and a sustained decline in birth rates. As a result, Spain's natural population growth is negative and its labor force is shrinking, exacerbating strains on the pension and healthcare systems. Efforts to counteract this include policies encouraging immigration, which is vital for workforce replenishment. Net annual arrivals are expected to remain high, averaging over 500,000 until 2030. However, long-term solutions, such as raising the retirement age and supporting family development, are being explored. Without these measures, Spain may face economic stagnation, social challenges like increased elderly isolation, and intensified pressure on healthcare and social welfare systems. The third reason is Spain's rapidly declining workforce. Spain's workforce is undergoing a rapid decline, primarily driven by demographic changes such as an aging population and consistently low birth rates. The National Institute of Statistics projects that by 2050, the ratio of working-age individuals, 15 to 64 years, to retirees could drop to just one and a half workers per retiree, compared to the current ratio of about two workers per retiree. This shrinking workforce poses a significant challenge for the sustainability of Spain's pension and social welfare systems, which are heavily reliant on contributions from active workers. Adding to the strain, Spain's labor force participation is being hindered by persistently high unemployment rates and precarious employment conditions, particularly among young people. Youth unemployment stood at over 28% in recent years, among the highest in Europe, preventing many from entering stable, long-term careers. The working age population is expected to decline dramatically, with some estimates indicating that the total population could fall from 47 million in 2021 to 41 million by 2050 if current trends continue. The fourth reason pushing Spain to accept these black migrants is Spain's massive rural depopulation. Rural depopulation is a growing concern in Spain. Immigrants moving to these areas can rejuvenate local economies, work in underpopulated regions, and prevent the decline of rural communities. Spain's rural areas face a significant depopulation crisis, with many villages experiencing sharp population declines or being entirely abandoned. Between 1996 and 2020, regions such as Asturias, Castilla y Leon, and Galicia saw population drops ranging from minus 17% to minus 27%, while areas near Mediterranean coasts and provincial capitals managed modest growth. In rural Spain, some 40% of residents are over the age of 65, compared to 28% in urban areas, highlighting an aging population. Economically, rural zones contribute less than 2% of Spain's jobs and GDP, exacerbating regional disparities and pushing younger generations toward cities. The abandonment of rural villages has left many with dwindling populations, such as Buchesta, which had only one resident as of a 2010 census. Initiatives to combat this include regional tax incentives and grants for young families and professionals to settle in smaller towns. For example, Castilla-La Mancha offers a 15% tax deduction for home purchases in villages with fewer than 5,000 inhabitants, while Galicia provides up to a 10% rebate for similar investments. Despite these efforts, experts emphasize that no magic solution exists to reverse rural depopulation entirely. The Spanish government has allocated significant funds such as 10 billion euros under the Recovery, Transformation and Resilience Plan to support rural areas, but challenges persist. Critics argue that investments need to focus more on sustainable business opportunities rather than large-scale infrastructure projects. Embracing remote work and promoting the lifestyle benefits of rural living could offer hope, particularly as urban dwellers seek alternatives to rising costs and overcrowding. This is a humble reminder to please support our work by liking this video and subscribe to the African Pacific YouTube channel. Thank you so much. Finally, the fifth reason is Spain's labor shortages in low-skilled sectors. Spain is experiencing significant labor shortages in several low-skilled sectors, driven by demographic shifts, economic recovery post-COVID-19, and growing demand in key industries. Many sectors such as agriculture, construction, hospitality and domestic work face significant labor gaps. 
Irregular immigrants often fill these roles supporting industries crucial to Spain's economy. In agriculture, seasonal jobs like fruit picking are particularly difficult to fill, with reliance on temporary workers from other countries increasing. The hospitality sector faces similar challenges. Many bars and restaurants report chronic understaffing, especially for roles like waitstaff and kitchen support, which are crucial to Spain's tourism-driven economy. One major factor behind these shortages is the lack of interest among local workers in low-paying or physically demanding roles, compounded by Spain's relatively high youth unemployment rate of over 30%. This mismatch forces employers to look abroad for workers. For instance, in construction, there is a growing demand for laborers to support infrastructure projects. Yet the sector struggles to attract sufficient domestic talent, further straining progress in this vital industry. These Gambian migrants will help in this regard. There you have it folks, these are the five reasons why Spain is willing to grant entry clearance to the Gambians. Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.